Uh, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas here today with Dr. Netta Shami of the Maloney Vision Institute. Dr. Shami is an expert in cornea, LASIK, and cataract surgery. And today she's going to be joining us today talking a little bit about dry eye, especially severe dry eye, and how it's related to other disease processes such as Graves' disease. First of all, thank you very much, Dr. Shamik, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Our patients always love hearing outside experts, especially in things that they're facing day to day. And many, much of what I hear is how patients who have had severe dry eye went to their ophthalmologist and helped to diagnose a, a more systemic condition. And I know that you're an expert in all phases of the exterior portion of the eye and the internal portion too. But um, tell me a little bit about how, you know, what patients may present with with severe dry eye and what may, may make you think about that they have something more going on in a generalized process. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And yeah. I'm really excited about this uh, discussion because it is... It's part of my, um, you know, dry eye disease is part of my expertise, non-surgical expertise. And it's, I've really delved into this for the last 15 years. Uh, patients come in often not telling me they have dry eyes. Uh, I am a cataract and refractive surgeon. One of the common symptoms they come in with is either decreased vision or unstable vision where doctor, you know, I feel like maybe I should have surgery because I can't look at the computer for too long without my vision blurring. Yeah. Or uh, they're seeking uh, LASIK surgery because they can't tolerate their contact lenses. And so one of my jobs is to make sure that there's no underlying dry eyes. Uh, the typical symptom patients have with dry eyes is burning and itching uh, or, uh, as I mentioned, unstable vision. Uh, when I see a patient with dry eyes, and especially if they have severe dry eyes, first thing I, I, I think about is, is there a systemic condition yeah. like rapes? And thyroid conditions are probably the most common underlying condition, systemic condition, that can be associ associated with dry eyes. But really any autoimmune condition mm -hmm. can affect the lacrimal gland where the tear is produced or the uh, structures around the eye that protects the eye surface. So rheumatological conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or any other autoimmune um, graves, as I mentioned, and other types of thyroid conditions also, in addition to Sjogren's. So I asked the patients, do you have other symptoms? Do you have joint pain? Do you have dry mouth? Do you have uh, sensitivity to cold or heat, tremors, weight loss, weight gain? So that's part of my discussion when I talk about dry eyes. Um, I, I, I'm, I love working with experts like yourself because you know, often I have questions of whether or not this patient has condition, you know, a systemic condition. Yeah. Or I think probably just as commonly are patients who have the condition and they come in with dry eyes and, and yeah. then we talk about, you know, can we address the systemic condition more aggressively? No, ab absolutely. And this is a Graves' disease in particular and Sjogren's and other processes too are an inflammatory process that attacks not in the lacrimal gland, but can attack the eyelids. And so it leads to this increased inflammation. In a future segment, we're going to talk about the different causes of dry eye. But one question I always get that I'm going to pose to you and let you answer is, well, I can't have dry eye because I'm tearing all the time. Yes. My eyes are constantly running. And so I have my, my you know, my you know answer to that, but I'd love to hear yours because oh, you're I'd the expert. I'd love to hear yours as well. <laughs> so, you know, the, the tear, what I tell my patients is that, yes, that is usually a very confusing symptom. Is why am I tearing so much? How could I have dry eyes? First of all, the, the term dry eyes is a terrible term. It, it's what was there 15 years ago. We now call it dysfunctional tear syndrome, DTS. Uh, there's many other, and, and many other terms. And the reason uh, we, I prefer using that term is because Yes, you could have dysfunctional tear syndrome where your tear film is not healthy and it's not doing the job that it should be doing. So you fall into the kind of a dry eye patient category, but in fact, it's not that you have lack of tears, it's just that it's not healthy tears. Yeah. And so when you don't have healthy tear that protects the eye surface, what does your body do? It then overreacts by creating more tears, but not healthy tears. And uh, the tear has three main layers, and if if any of those layers are affected or deficient or not, not optimized, then your tear film will not stay on the ocular surface, on the eye surface long enough 
to protect the eye, and so your body just overreacts by creating more tears. Yeah. So my answer is very similar. You know, it's a, a little you know country esque in that you know it's kind of like if you smell an onion, it, it irritates your eyes and you tear. It doesn't mean your eyes were dry or not dry. It just means that there's something that's irritating your eyes, and that's usually the wind or something else that is causing a temporary drying phenomenon, just yeah. like an onion. That's why you tear. But that's always the one of those common questions is I can't use yeah. tears because they're tearing all the time. Well, there's two types. There's reflex tearing, which is that type yeah. of tearing where it's in reaction to something. And then there's the baseline tearing, yeah. which, which is more of the normal. And I think in Graves' disease, the other thing besides the fact that there's inflammation around the eye is that often if there is proptosis, if the eye is not positioned in the right place yeah. in the globe and the eyelid doesn't close comfortably around the eyeball to protect the eye, then you can have what's called exposure um, keratopathy or exposure problems where the surface of the eye dries out because the eye is not closing 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of these patients also, there's a Bell's phenomena, it's called, mm -hmm. where the eye rotates up in protection every time you blink or close your eyes. And in Graves patients, that muscle is very tight and it doesn't work either. So, so lots of reasons for dry eye and Graves, but the most important is probably to see a professional very much like Dr. Shami who can really dissect out and, and determine why. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.